Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of a variety of ages, it's Monday, it's night time, it's 9pm, it's time for a bit of fun and a bit of light-hearted football bounce with me, Pommy and Oz, and I'm joined this week by good friend in real life and in the virtual world of Pommy and Oz, Swoop Luke, how are you Swoop mate? Good mate, For uh, what, a bit, what better way to start my week than to hang out? To uh, hang out with you, mate, and and the and the greater greater Pommy and Oz community. Hey, we're we're all excited to have you. You've been much requested. I've got the laughing magpie in chat. He has been My nagging boy. me to get you on to this show. So <laughs> I, he will shout out to the laughing magpie. Shout yeah. out to uh, they they. I don't know if it's a he or she. They always comment on. Uh, all my, Insta, my uh, YouTube video, so I, I appreciate the support and follow me over here. It's been good. Hey, mate, he's a, he's a big fan of both of our work, so it's good to have you here. But Swoop, you had the week off this week. Just tell the chat what a buy is like uh, round five. Yeah, it's, man, it's it's weird. It's it's one of those – it's that opening round, opening round thing, man. I, I still can't get my head around it. I, I still do like – buys being all you remember when buys used to be like just one team would have the buy the whole like the whole sorry the whole um 18 teams would just have the buy in one round and then we play the next week or it'd be a split round um instead of this you know six buys uh six teams having a buy one week and now it's two teams every week because of the opening round just does my head in man it's um it's good but i do miss the football it's been a weird season hasn't it with the random buys and You've played six, we've played five. It's a, it, it, it's a weird, weird methodology. But feeling refreshed, I suppose, Luke. Are you? Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, six coffees a day will do to you. Feel really, feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously, swoop early season. Let's get straight into it. But obviously, this week, uh, the dogs, uh, another disappointing performance. Um, Luke Beveridge is on the chopping block. What do we make of them, Swoop? Because they have fallen off quicker than One Direction, haven't they? Man, my I've got I've got two cousins, um, Marcus and Jake, who are big, big doggies fans, and they always give me shit when uh, the Pies lose. So it's nice to have a bit of banter with them when, when they lose. But the doggies fumbling pretty much to a dynasty team. Let, let's you know, like. What they were in 2016, they were kind of – they didn't really back it up in 2017, obviously. But to have Bonte Pally leading you, to have the guys around them um, as well, it's – it has to be it, – it, it, what do they say? The fish rots from the from the head down. It has to be Beveridge, right? He, something something has to change. They I don't reckon – Beveridge might be the first coach we see stacked by, before the year's over. It's a weird one, isn't it, Swoop? Because, I mean, I, I'm with you. I'm of your school. I think their list is way too good for one premiership yeah. in a decade. 100%. Like Melbourne as well. Yeah, that may be fair. I mean, I, I think when you look at the midfield of McRae, Libertore and Bond, like, that's yeah. better than 90% of the midfields in the league. Yeah, yeah. And they just, you know, and yeah, it sucks that, you know, they got a couple of injuries. Like, Bailey Smith is a big out for him, but... When you've got like Norton could be a little bit better, but you got Norton, you got um, Jamari Hagen Hagen uh, as well. Uh, they've got really good guys sort of around them. Um, but yeah, Damien brings up a good point. Bevo's lost the group. Caleb Daniel gets dropped. Uh, Bailey Bailey Dale is that his name? Was it was the sub as well, which was really weird. It's it's a it's a freaking weird time to be a doggy supporter. Let me tell you, mate. The, they're a bizarre one because I, you know when you do your preseason predictions, and I always say this to people. There's two teams I have in my eight every year, Port Adelaide and the Dogs. But yep. I don't. I, I would not give them a prayer of winning the flag, either of them. No, no, I, I'm, I haven't been. Look, I know we. This is probably going to bite me on the ass because we play Port Adelaide this week. But I haven't really been super convinced with Port Adelaide either. But I haven't been really. You know, there's a couple of teams like that. But yeah, the Doggies are uh, are definitely. Maybe Adelaide as well, one of the biggest disappointments of the season. And where do you think they'll go next? Because I don't think there's any standout coaching appointments, is there? Like, everyone seems to be been taken. all recruited. Yeah, like, they probably, you know, you probably have to start picking from 
clubs that are in the window. Like Uze would have been good. Kingsley would have been good. But obviously those, um, they've jumped. Um, could, you know, could they look at Lepic? Could they look at Bolton? I don't, you know, like pe- like even the Tigers were looking at Lepic at one point. Could they look at, um, you know, one of Voss's right-hand men that, that have got Carlton to where they are now? Like there's probably some really good assistants, but no, none of them really stand out. So they might have to stick with beverage for the rest of the year until someone becomes, um, well, not even becomes available because no one, no, no coach is going to put their hand up to coach the doggies unless it's an assistant. Mate, I, I'm with you. I, 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 I know Ash Hansen Rowan here is worried. He's been often linked with uh, the dogs. We got him from the dogs. He probably is the best, uh, the best assistant available that has openly talked about senior coaching, but. I also yeah. think no one ever looks at their list management and Vincent makes a great point. When I look at what they recruit and I look at what you guys did, like Lockie Schultz, you're in the window, you've gone for best available mid small forward. You look at Melbourne, they've taken some speculative picks, but they've gone with what they need. Yep. The dogs seem to be like the most vanilla team as well in the trade period, don't they? They don't seem to ever really be linked yeah. with anyone good. And um, they they don't seem to ever go for anyone. Well, when they recruited, um, when they recruited Lob, like Vincent just said, every like even I don't look. I I really don't follow many other teams besides the Pies and what they're sort of doing. But even I looked at Lob and go, why the hell is he coming to the doggies? Like, why do they want him? Like, what has what will he bring to this? You know, when you when you recruit, you're either recruiting for for two reasons to help like uh, a, young, a really young side, like North Melbourne, not that they've done good recruiting, and West Coast, bring in some older heads to sort of help them out. Or you want to win You want to win a flag. You want, like you said, Lockie Schultz, uh, you know, uh, Williams and, and those guys that you guys have uh, brought in um, as well. But you look at Lob and you go, he could have fit in six other teams, Hawthorne maybe, Gold Coast maybe. Um, but the Doggies was just, just weird, really weird for him to go to the Doggies. And think he was going to get a game every single week. It feels like they just collect average players. Like Laughing Magpie great makes a great point. Like Lipinski and Hunter, both very yep. good players. But when you lose them type of players, you're expecting quality to come in, aren't you? And yep. it, they seem to they seem to recruit like a like a like an Eagles, like like a bottom side yeah. who were just trying to get yeah. extras. Yeah. Yeah, they're not. They're not like I said. They're not recruiting for. Um, <laughs> keep, <laughs> people keep saying I look like Elijah Wood, and I'll take it because he's a really good actor and he's and he's uh, good looking. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll take it. But um, uh, yeah, what was I saying? That made me lose my train of thought. Yeah, dog is a shit. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> they're terrible at the moment. For for like, look, and I feel sorry for. I feel sorry for Bond. I feel sorry for Bailey Smith. You know, um, these these sort of guys that give their all to to the club, especially Bond. Um, is he winning a flag in, in the next five years? Is he going to go as just the probably probably the greatest ever Bulldogs player? And does he only have one flag to his name? You know what's going to be interesting? And I'll ask you this, because I know you're heavily linked with Bailey Smith, who is out of contract this year. Do you think it's about this time, let's just say they finish outside the eight, that we might see some clubs trying to push the agenda with Bonapelli. Because like you say, he's a bit like Patrick Cripps when we were shit, but he never yeah. won the flag. So obviously there's that loyalty to finish what you started. Bon has been there and done that. So him leaving, he's not really dogging the boys, is he? Yeah, so you, good, it's, it's funny that you bring up... Um, Patrick Cripps, because like, you know, obviously he was there from when you guys, you know, sh- there's a joke, joke of him always strapping up his shoulders because he was, you know, carrying the club. But then uh, Nick Larkey came out because he's playing his 100th game and he's like, you know, I signed that contract extension because, you know, is it almost cheating to go to another club and win a flag in the next year or being at a club that you started with nothing and build up to that flag? So it's kind of the same with Patrick Cripps and what they're building. But like you said, Bont's already been there. He's already done that. Does he see the like I said? Does he see the the doggies winning in the flag in the next three, four, five years? And is there opportunity to go somewhere else? Does anyone really have ammunition for him? It would be, it'd be big. But could 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 people start jumping jumping ship with the doggies? Mate, if you were 
If you were a gold cast, or if oh, kitchen sink, do you know what I mean? Like Bontepelli yeah. added to that midfield is probably the missing link, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, oh, could you? What is it? Hang on, I'm just gonna. Because uh, Bailey Anderson Smith, um, Bailey Smith looks Anderson. like a Collingwood player. Well, Bontepelli is contracted until 2025. It looks like so. That and that would make him a free agent next year at the end of next year. So, do you try and get something for him now if you know that he's going to leave next year? If you're the doggies, I mean, surely, uh, I mean, surely, if you're one of the you're a club mid table, he could jettison into, into the eight, couldn't he? Yeah, so he it's could, going to be interesting. Check eight club anyway, it would be, mate. It's, um, it'd be interesting, yeah. Well. We saw Cam Rayner this week, um, and I was actually really sm- I-, I smiled because I feel like Cam Rayner came into the draft in probably the worst period of AFL, where media were trying to compare you to the greatest player in finals in Dustin Martin. That draft has really been a poor draft, but he looked like he'd come of age. And the question I'm asking you, Luke, and chat is. How long do we wait for these stars to bear? Because obviously not every junior is Sam Walsh and Nick Dacos. Do you know what I mean? Some of them take a while to grain in. Do you think we give up too quickly on these stars and expect too much too quickly? Yeah, look, I, I think so. We kind of had this chat on footy abroad um, last week. There's some players, like you said, that are just going to come in, uh, play the first, play round one, and then never come out of the team. Nick Dacos. Sam Walsh, um, you know Harley Reid, even at the moment, um, it, it, I think it's a it's a it's a little bit different. And you mentioned it last week, especially with like the like the soccer the soccer and the EPL coming through academy. So you're kind of seeing them build up. Uh, at at the moment, we do jump off a lot of players really quickly. Like Cam Rayner, um, you know he's still so young, and he played. Was it last year? He played a couple of good finals games. He played that really one really good game against us as that deep forward. Um, but then he had two bad games, whatever it was. People jumped right off him. Now he's showing what he can do. I think the thing with um, the thing I was going to say the thing with Collingwood, the thing with AFL media is that we put so much hype onto one one player. Let's just say Cam Rayner. If it doesn't, if he doesn't meet our expectations, we just drop off him, and then he's able to breathe. Then we're not comparing him to Dustin Martin. We're not comparing him to Gary Ablett Jr. or this or that or that. And then he has the room to okay. That expectation is off my shoulders. That was a bad three three years where everyone just wanted me to be something I wasn't, and now I can breathe. I can be my own player, and we're kind of seeing the the um the fruits of that of that labor now. Like, what did he have? I uh, will talk a little bit about that later. But you know, nine clearances, four hundred meters gain, twenty five disposals, um, insane. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we did talk about it on Footy Abroad, and I find it a great conversation because I mean, at the moment, you and me as Carlton and Collingwood fans, we go through two real height top talents in Sam Walsh and Nick Dacos. Both, in my opinion, since they've been drafted, I don't think you'll find a better resume than Sam Walsh and Nick Dacos from the day they were drafted in their output and what they've achieved. And I think both of them are head and shoulders more consistent than any draftee we've seen in the last decade. But it's also weird that you can be too good and a victim of your own hype. Like we saw Sam Walsh caught the injury this year. Mitch Cleary came out and said that his career's over. He's walking like an old man. The back's gone. He comes back this week, tears the game open. Nick Dacos constantly talked that he doesn't get a hard ball. Yet for the position he plays, he's elite for contested possessions. We also go the other way, don't we, that we expect the greatest player to be great at everything, not just his role. Yeah, yeah. And then that's and that's the thing. Like, I think I said it last year at one point. I don't know if it was to you or if it was on Twitter or something. It was like, and it was about the Nick Dacos thing, you know. Um, he's not winning a hardball. He's not going in. And I think I compared it to, I was like, why would you drive your Ferrari around Broadmeadows? Like, you just you just wouldn't. You'd go up. You'd go to, you'd go to the beaches. You'd go... Uh, to these expensive sort of uh, places around all the billion dollar mansions, you know, you wouldn't drive it around Broadie. So that's not, that's not his role. Tom Mitchell's there, um, you know, 
uh, Jordan Degoe, Jack Crisp. They, 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 you know, those guys are sort of there, Scott Pendlebury, to do that and give it off to him, and he can play his, and then he can play his role. Yes, he'll get a hard ball when he needs to, but if your coach is telling you, look, you don't need to because that's not what we want you to do, how how is that? anyone else's problem you know what i mean and and it's the same for for all these guys that were that we're seeing come through um come through the system and sam walsh is a good example of that as well you know team mellow makes a great point here connor rosey for me now this might be controversial but i think zach butters is a better player consistently from day one than connor rosey but i feel like connor rosey has had just as many bad games as he's had great and it's only recently he's hit his stride. But Rosie seems to always get away with it for since he's been drafted, yeah. where Walsh has a bad game, Nick Dacos has a bad game. They're slated. I, I don't think Rosie has been in the top three players at Paul every game since he's been drafted. No, and, and I think that's, that's well, two things on that. Butters and Rosie, I, in my head, I, I can't tell... Who is who? I can't tell them apart. They both look exactly the same to me, and I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue why. Um, the second thing is, I think it's the Victorian factor, right? Uh, of co- the Victorian media um, that we're not ripping Rose uh, Butters or any of these sort of guys apart. Like, like even Adelaide starting zero and before the Carlton game, starting zero and four, you wouldn't even. I, I understand why you wouldn't read about it here, or what, or what sort of watch it, and not. It's not big on talking footy and all that sort of stuff. But it should be still talked about. It's still a big sort of story. So that's when everything is exacerbated. That's why um, a Dugowie slip up is exacerbated. That's why Patrick Cripps limping with his knee to training one day is exacerbated because it's just that that footy that footy media. You mentioned Adelaide, and I think it's a great point because over in Victorian media, as we know, just before the Adelaide Carlton game, there was an article that Rochelle and uh, Rankine have been massive letdowns for Adelaide. And it's arguably mm. Rankin probably played his best game against Carlton. He was sensational. And yep. the media this today have talked about the coming of age, how he's, he's the big, great white hope of Adelaide. The midfield move could see him in the top 10. It is funny as well how with these draftees, these young players, we don't give them the room to grow. It's like as soon as they've had one good game, this is expected. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing with um, I, f- I find with footy media, and it's not even you know I've probably been guilty of it in the past um, as well. I guess we all sort of have where, yeah, you see one good game, you're like, oh, this, and and I think Dago is a good example. Where you're like, okay, this is what he can do. This is what he should be producing. Then he has a shit game. You're like, then you jump off him. You're like, no, nah, he needs to get better. He needs to do this. He needs to do this. I think we we micro we microscope um, or magnify too many. Too much in 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 um in the footy media, the journos and stuff, um, and I think yeah, again, it's it's the Victorian factor where we just want to sort of microscope in and, and find every single fault, every single um you know uh, uh, quake line as well. You're you're a Collingwood fan, like when you look at Nick Dacos. Am I? <laughs> well, when you look <laughs> at the, I want it from a Collingwood fan's perspective. Do you watch Nick Dacos and come away from the game and go? Wish he was harder at that contest. I, I I wish he'd stop getting ball out the back. Wish he'd burst through stoppages a bit more. Or are you just like he's he's a twenty year old kid learning his trade? Can't wait for him to be twenty five and have fifty touches and six yeah. goals. I watch Nick Dacos and I'll watch him. I'll I swear to God, I'll watch him get a handball and just give off a handball and go. Far out. If he's doing this at 20, what's he going to be doing at 26 when he's reached his peak? You know what I mean? Like, I think it's – if you find a Collingwood supporter that says, oh, I wish Nick Dacos went in harder, like, oh, um, I wish Nick, da- Nick Dacos did – I wish Nick Dacos did that. I think there's – I in my, in my opinion, I think they're just saying – they would be just saying that to kind of um, just try and be critical of him. And be be with the rest, sort of be like a sheep with the opposition fans, because you shouldn't be harassing your players like that. Just in general, right? We can be critical of our players. Um, if I see Nick, Nick Dacos kick a ball, try and kick for goal, that shouldn't be a goal. He should have passed it off. That's when you say I should have done that. But if I if it's all it's all a learning curve, right? This whole topic has just been about learning curves. Um, and yeah, like I, I'll watch him give a handball and go fuck. If he's doing this at twenty one. 
what's he going to be doing? <laughs> what's he going to be doing in 25 years? It's a great point. It's a great point because my my granddad who raised me, he was a big United fan and he used to talk to me about George Best and say like he was the best player I've ever seen. So um, like every time we watched a player, he'd be like, George Best did this 30 years ago on shit grass with crap balls. And I remember yeah. when Cristiano Ronaldo debuted, we were at that game. We were sat at the halfway line. Oh, wow. And my pop going, my pop going, this is special. This kid's got something. And he used to drill into me, enjoy these moments, enjoy these moments, because one day you'll have grandkids like we are here now, and you'll be telling them about the time you saw Cristiano. And it's something I've learned from him that enjoy it, because before you know, they're a legend. And if you were too busy finding fault, you never get to enjoy them moments. And I watched Ronaldo. He had some shocking games. He wasn't always the Ronaldo yeah. you know. There were some days yeah. where he was absolutely atrocious and you were like, what is wrong with this kid? But once he hit his pinnacle, it was like, what? Like honestly, it would be like watching Jesus Christ. That, that year we got to the Champions League final, he was like, it was literally like the second coming of Christ. I've never seen a player yeah. like it. And it always yeah. makes me happy that I appreciated the journey. And it does worry me we'll miss these key moments of when Walsh starts to complete his circle, when Dacos completes the circle. If we're so busy finding faults, we won't enjoy it. Yeah, and, and that's and I think that's look, I know we, we it's it's 922 and, and we can get a little bit deeper now. I think that's a good philosophy in life as well and something that i've tried i'll try to um try to be a, a little bit more appreciative of in the last couple of years where you know you, it, you, you need to find time to step back smell the roses admire the roses because one day those roses they, they they're going to be gone like you know and that and that's um and that can come down to family that can come down to um you know just texting one of your friends or texting one of your family members it's watching Sam Walsh do his thing on the weekend. It's watching Nick Dacos. Um, it's watching a premiership, like or or just a final. These, these that, that they don't they don't grow on trees, you know. You have to, and and the best thing about it is you can enjoy it in in any way you want to, you know. And and that's and that's the beauty of it. Like if it's something that makes you happy and you're just taking the time back to to smell the roses, you can you can smell them and view them any way any way you want to. And that's the that's the beautiful thing about life. And and you're right. We, we should be enjoying seeing these players stop comparing them not that it's ever going to happen we're always going to compare these players um but once you start thinking that way um it makes everything so much more enjoyable like going to the footy like yes oh fuck carlton lost by carlton lost by two points and oh shit you know sack fast this and that we just saw walsh come back from a six-week back injury he had 36 fucking disposals and he looked like he he hasn't missed a game he looked like he just came off a premiership at a brown low you know but that gets that gets clouded now because Carlton lost by two points, and now it's oh blah 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 blah. Carlton, we lost by two points. We should have won. Sam Walsh was incredible. Step back. Yes, we lost, but uh, sorry, yes, you lost. <laughs> but you know, you you admire you, that you, you that Sam that Sam Walsh rose. Walsh rose. You have to admire it. And you have to smell it. No, mate, I I agree. Like I said it myself. I was genuinely surprised how good Sam Walsh was. Like. Like I like I know it sounds stupid. I haven't seen him play for what sixteen weeks or whenever it was when he last played. But I'd actually yeah. forgotten how good he was. Like, yeah. and it was actually yep. kind of nice. Like I, I put it to the back of my mind because I've been focusing on people replacing him. But then to see him, I was like, Jesus, this guy's good. Like it was like Chris Judd. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it was the vibes I had when I saw Chris Judd when I first came here. Like Jesus, this kid's built different. Yeah, and yeah, Chris Judd was something else, wasn't he? And and that's the thing, like even you know, with us, even things like like Pendles and stuff, he's probably only got a few years left. Um, and we just have to make have to make the most of it because all all good things all good things come to an end. And why why reflect on a career that was when you can reflect on a career that is right now? I genuinely think like growing up as a football fan, being blessed to be in the, me and my wife were talking about this because she's got really into a round ball, but I was talking to her like, growing up, we had Ronaldo and Messi, but 
Then you look at the players that don't get talked about. Kaka, players like Hazard. Like You're talking yep. world-class talent that if yep. Messi and Ronaldo weren't there, they'd be talked about the same. We're in that kind of in the air. If I like you. You've got Dacos, you've got Walsh. Then you've got Rosie, you've got Butters. Then you've got yep. forwards, Kerno, Cameron, Larky, Mitch Lewis yep. could be a goer, Oscar Allen. Like We are in a generation right now where I think there's about yep. 30 icons in yep. the league. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. It's a good time. It's a good time to be um, a football fan, not even just a team fan, just a football fan in general. It's, um, yeah, we, we, we are blessed. And, and you look at this sort of the yesteryear and the 90s and the, and the 2000s and all those sort of star players there in the 80s and stuff. And now you look at these new kids that are that are coming through um, and you can you can generally put on any game of football on the weekend and find three gems that are just like, wow, I get to watch these guys for the next 15 years. Are you kidding me? Like, how good is that? How good that we get to watch Walsh, Dacos, Butters, Rosie, um, you know, and Harley Reid and and the, the kids from fucking from North Melbourne for the next 15 years. Like, that's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Mate, I'm looking forward to it. We, st we still need a pies count and final, but... Well, we'll, we'll uh, take the we, kids. We don't. We'll take the kids. We don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, imagine how good the content would be between you and me. But we've, we, we, you've had, you've had the buy. You've had the buy. Yep. So you've had a bit of a chance. Like we had a buy a couple of weeks ago. I really enjoyed it because it allowed me just to watch football and pretend we weren't in it. But so far this season, we've got. I think if you look at every team's fixture list. From now till the actual buy, the real buy, the halfway point. The real buy, yep. Um, you, you look, all these teams have got some real banana skins. And we saw the runaway favourites, GWS, got run incredibly close this week by yep. St Kilda. Do you think we're going to see, we're seeing the Premier League, a tight race. We haven't had three teams within a, a win off each other for what feels like millenniums. This looks yeah. already to be the tightest top eight, but also the tightest top four that we've seen for some time. Yeah, well, you look at the um, you look at the 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 ladder last year, and that's a kind of indication. Like, look at the pies. We we won three finals by collectively twelve points or whatever it was. So it was always always a close thing. And then you look at this one coming in. Carlton were only going to get better. GWS were. Off a grand final by a point, you know Brisbane and Collingwood. Obviously, they they're not doing that well um, at the moment. Uh, Gold Coast out of nowhere, uh, Port Adelaide. You know all these teams. It's it's really really close. And you know it, I guess it it is a, a little bit different because you know in the EPL they do have the title race, so you want to be at the top of the table by by the end of it. Um, but the top the push for the top four uh, is going to be really really close. But the push for those sixth, seventh, and eighth spots is just going to be nuts. And you know I had Adelaide in eighth or just missing out. Um, I had the Bulldogs up there as well. Um, but there's these other teams that are sort of coming through, like Essendon might be able to, you know, get to ninth or 10th maybe. Um, you know, Brisbane and Collingwood, you, you would assume that they're going to have a, they're going to storm home and try and make, try and make the eight. They might finish sixth and seventh respectively. Um, but the thing is, as soon as you get to that, that finals, like doesn't matter. I think this is the year, you know how they, they say, no team sort of won it from outside the top four. Like the Bulldogs did in 2016, uh, and then one other team, whatever it was. If anyone wins it from eighth spot, it'll be this year. That's how close it's going to be. It is insane, isn't it? Like when you when you look at the teams, like like you only have got to look like this weekend. Last week we did the thing saying that we thought there was only two teams that won't be top eight, that won't be in the eight at the moment, and that's the Eagles and North. You can underline. And Hawthorne yep. are probably half an underline, but I think they're definitely there now. I, I I think you look at it like Eagles beating Richmond. Like I know a lot of people called it, but if you actually think about it logically, actually take your logic hat on, that is a mental result when you look at the lists of both teams. Yep. And let's be honest, Richmond just threw that away, didn't they? Which I think you look at Carlton versus Adelaide. They weren't very good. Carlton weren't on it. Adelaide took advantage. I feel like a lot of teams are going to be like that this year. If you don't take advantage, it's game over. 
Well, look, it's um, a, a perfect example, and, and I'm sorry to the Carlton fans in here that I, that I keep bringing up the pies, but that's all I do. Um, you look at Collingwood, Collingwood Hawthorne. We were up by 38 points at half time. I turned to my friend, um, who's a Hawthorne supporter that I was watching it with, and I said, you know, you're in for a long day. We're going to win by 60, 70 points here. I don't see us letting up. And then they get too cocky. They don't switch on after half time. We win the game by five points. These these teams who have, who be, what is it? Beware the wounded dog. These teams that have nothing to play for, um, are, with their backs against the wall, they're the ones that you need to be scared of. Mate, mate I, I agree. Like I can see, uh, I, I think Essendon teams like that are going to be finals destroyers. The teams that yep. are so inconsistent, I, I watch them and think that they are so inconsistent. They can be good and be hot. I feel like they're the teams that are going to ruin your top four, top eight ambitions because you take them a little bit lightly. You go in, you don't quite rate them, and then boom, yep. before you know it, you've lost four points, and they're the four points at the end of the year. You kick yourself. 100%. It happened to us in 2022 when we lost to the Eagles at Marvel. We were up, and then and then, and they hadn't won a game, I don't think. Or they either hadn't won a game or they've won one or something. Um, and they were paying like, like eight dollars to win or, or some something crazy like that. Uh yeah, and it's those teams that yeah can can trip you up. Hawthorne did it to us last year as well after we came off that Carlton loss. Um so yeah, it's it's those are the yeah, it's gonna be good when Collingwood play Haw uh Collingwood play Carlton. But when Collingwood play West Coast or Collingwood play North, um, and we need those four points for the top eight, that's when it gets spicy. It's a very interesting thing as well, because like what I do love about the media is like two weeks ago, I was saying this, Sydney and GWS, they were like the winks of this of this grand final derby. Like everyone said that they were too good. Then Sydney obviously slipped up. Adelaide, GWS haven't been incredibly convincing this week just yeah. gone. But then I look and it's really weird because as an English football fan, I, I feel like the general English football fan has a lot more appreciation for one-off results and how hard it is to win. I think probably because it's it's a marathon where this is like a mini yep. sprint. But don't you yeah. find it funny? And I never understand it. And I see this. I don't know if you see it in Collingwood, but I'll see it in Carlton fans probably more than I've ever seen in any other spot. One loss, Carlton fans bag the club. They're over it. They can't win it. We're rubbish. Put it in the bin. Rip your membership <laughs> up. Where I've never seen it. And I, I've been guilty of this because I find AFL culture so weird. It infects my psyche. And yeah. it, it took me a year to get out of it. Really, it, I had to really decompress. I had to go back home and drink beer with football fans to get rid of it. <laughs> but don't you find it weird that this is like an AFL problem in it? One bad performance, and it's get rid of it, get rid of it, get, yeah. just blow blow the doors off. And not saying all oh, Carlton fans, Julie, you're an angel, my darling, you're an angel. But <laughs> it is really weird how how it happens, doesn't it? Like fans just jump off. Yeah, it's um, it it it's just it's systemic, isn't it? Like you know, we we always opposition supporters always bag out Carlton fans because you guys. From what we see, you guys do it the most. It's uh, it's crazy, you know. Um, but like when we went zero and three to start the year, we weren't. Collingwood fans weren't that bad. Like we weren't like, oh, you know, McRae out, we can't make finals. We're going to do this. It was more constructive criticism than it was criticism. And I think if your your if your criticism comes from uh, a good place, that that's fair enough. But if you're saying, you know, burn memberships already. Um, it's it's a little bit um it's a little bit different but yeah it, 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 we do we do see it a lot more in the AFL than you know I, I don't see there was a bad I can't put my finger on it now there was a bad bad loss that city man city had a bad loss um in the lead up to the title race i can't remember what it was um but not one person was saying pep needs to go pep can't do this why did he do this what well, he's like no nah, trust the process football is very uh, the EPL is very trust the process uh, and this, the AFL is very, what the hell is the process? It, yeah, it, it, it's a bizarre thing because, I mean, like, honestly, like, I, I feel very blessed to do AFL content because it, it, it's really simplistical. 
in its tactical approach compared to any to, in, to EPL. EPL, you're talking 17 distance different systems out of 20. Massive variables, really so many variables. Where you look at AFL, it, I mean, come on, we give them a point for missing. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> it's and we also give um, we also give McDonald's awards when it, at, and under nines when your team gets done by three hundred points as well. So that's probably where it starts from. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's true. And uh, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's I, I agree with Lucinda. Do you know what I mean? Like. I agree. When the criticism's strategic, do you know what I mean? That's good. Like, I love it. But, like, like you, you look at Cal and round 12, the Essendon thing, and I know it was only a minority. It was only a minority. 75% of Cal fans I dealt with, it, it changed their lives. It changed my life. Do you know what I mean? It changed my life. It made me yeah. question how I was because some people I saw commenting were fans of my stuff. And then I realized maybe I give you that impression. Because that's sometimes what happens. But it does seem weird, doesn't it, how people fr- just fall off. Just fall off very quickly where, like, maybe I'm getting old, Luke, but I've seen it all. You <laughs> lose, you win. Sometimes it's not as easy. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you've just got to grind. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that's the thing. It takes us back to that um, smell the roses thing. You know, there's you're not going to win 25 games. You know, you're not going to win every single week. You got to find you got to find the roses in in a bunch of concrete sometimes. I remember last year Hawthorne, they beat you, didn't they? They beat both the finalists, yeah. Brisbane and uh, so so yeah, Hawks beat us right after Carlton beat us. Yeah, I, re- I, re- I remember breaking it, but we do go now to the fun part of the show. So we got snack attack. So this is everyone's favorite time. The subject this week is snacks for an for an AFLX team, an AFLX style team. We've had all sorts so far, so I am looking forward to this swoop because you are right. one of you are one of the funniest content creators I know. So let's see if I can. Do <laughs> okay. There we are. All right. So, so- how you want. So you tell me, you told me, um, Luke, I need you to come up with Snack FC um, and, and put your best snacks in. And I thought, oh, this, this would be easy. Like, I love snack. I love snacking. But then the more I sort of delved into it, the more I was like, what constitutes a snack? Is it like, is it like a, like a chip or is a chocolate a snack? Um, can a, you know, is a biscuit, like is an Anzac biscuit, is that classified as a snack? Is a snack anything you sort of go to the fridge and eat? Can I snack, is a halal snack pack a snack? Um, so I try to keep it to things that are, that I would sort of go to the, go to the fridge or go to the cupboard um, to eat. Uh, so we'll start with the defenders. Uh, yeah. So do you want me to give like, a, you want me to give a reason why I sort of chose them or you just want me to tell you and we'll have a chat about it or? All yeah, right. yeah, so right. I've gone with, all right. So um I've gone with the most reliable. You see this person at parties and you know this this thing here, he's he's you chuck him in the back line as a full back, he's gonna do you no wrong. He does the team thing all the time, and that's salt and vinegar chips. Oof. Mate, th- the best as well. The best flavor yeah. chips, in my opinion. Just just does does nothing wrong. Does nothing wrong. Does does its job really really well. Uh, the next the next defender I've got here is um, a bit more a bit more nuanced. He's a bit more um, a bit more modern. This this snack here, and I've gone the chicken snack wrap from McDonald's. Um, Three dollars. You get that on the drive through after a long day after a long day at work. Get some extra mayo on that. Um, another one that just just does its job. Like pre dinner, just does its job. Gets the job done. And um, those are my those are my two backs uh, leading leading snack FC. Um, now the mids. Now I went with something here that I don't know if a lot of people sort of um, snack on this, but this is one of my personal 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 favourites. A um, little bit spicy because we know a mid likes to be a little bit flamboyant. I've gone with Takis as my as one of my mids. Takis. What? Yeah, you, you had Takis before. So they're like a um, so they're a, an American American food American snack. They're a Dorito that's sort of like it's sort of like a rolled Dorito that's in a lot of 
like spicy, like spicy uh, flavors, like a flaming hot Cheeto almost. Um, I'll get you a, I'll get you a packet the next time I see you. It's uh, really good stuff. Really, Mate, these good sound stuff. amazing. Um, these sound amazing. Yeah. I, I'm sold. Yeah, get one, get one. Really good. Um, and the mid. So we know that in the center, it's sort of your, sort of your person where. You sort of look up to, you know, you got like your Scott Penelbury sometimes in the center, the goalie, Patrick Cripps, they're leading from the front. They're doing what they do best. Natella is going to be my center man. Oh, mate. Just give me a, give me a spoonful. 3 a.m. in the morning. I've just woken up. Just a spoonful um, of, of Natella and I'm good to go. I'm ready to run through a brick wall with that. Mate, Natella is a great show. Like what, what a, what a spread. What a spread. <laughs> not bad, uh, not bad. Now, this next one, and there's a I guess there's a little bit of of a sort of, oh it's not really a theme, I guess. No. So the next one, the next one on here on the wing or, or that third midfield spot is um so this this one is pretty good. I love Oreos. I'm gonna go Oreos as my third mid as my third mid spot. Very versatile. They can play in the in the mid. They can go up forward. If they have to run off half back, you can dip them in milk if you want. You can just twist those bastards and eat them by itself. You can eat them dry. A variety of flavors as well. Uh, very versatile. So I've gone. Um, I've gone Oreos there. Mate, mate, Oreos. I, I, are you a splitter? My, my, my kids split them. No, I, I, I can't split them. If I split them, I want to get them perfect, and I can never do it, and it annoys me. So I just dunk them and dunk them and chuck them in. Mate, 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 I love it. I love it. This is going well. This. We've got a nice chocolate savoury mix here. It's a good balance. Yeah. It's, so my Ruckman is somewhat – so when you think of Ruckmans, you think of obviously tall, right? And I think of Ruckmans as kind of bland, kind of bland – and they're not like they're super like you wouldn't go and go, oh, awesome. Let's go get this Ruckman um, and have a party with him. That's not what I think about. So when I think of that, I think of Pringles as my Ruck. Oh, mate, 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 mate. I, I, I rate that. I rate that. <laughs> what so I'll, go, Pringles? I'll get Pringles. Oh, this is just bland. This is just original. So not even sour cream. This is just classic. This is just classic Pringles. Mate, 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 what's your favourite Pringles flavour? Chat, throw it in. What's your favourite, though, if you had to buy any Pringle? Oh, sour cream. Sour cream and, and – is it sour cream and chai or sour cream and onion? That has to be – that's the go-to. You know, I, I've got into a barbecue recently. Barbecue, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, like no, a no. subtle barbecue. Yeah, that's I, – I haven't tried that one. I'll have to, I'll have to give it – I'll have to give it a go. All right. We'll go to our forwards now. Now, this one might be – it's definitely a snack. I consider it a snack. Um, a nice big block of tasty cheese. Just – just I'll go – if I'm hungry, if it's before dinner and I'm at home and I've got nothing else to eat, like I'm waiting for dinner, I'll go to the fridge, grab the, grab the chopping board out, put a slab of cheese on there, cut some of that cheese in, bang. That's, that's, a, that's the perfect snack for me. Now we can see why he's got such big muscles. He's gone with the simple <laughs> facts. The simple <laughs> facts, mate. <laughs> mate, all right. So it tastes this, like a cheese. Thank you. So this last one. Now, when we think of snacks, right? So I think of snacks and I think of something. It's not dinner. It's not big. It's just something small. It's something delicious. It's something that sort of, it gets the tummy going. It gives you like little butterflies. It, it's delicious. You know, it's so tasty and, it, and it's sexy. A snack is sexy. Uh, so for that last forward spot for a snack, I've gone with me. I've gone with Swoop Luke as the, as the forward snack. Cause I'm not the dinner baby. I'm the, I'm a snack. The f I was waiting for someone, I was waiting for someone to pick themselves. The fruit links, didn't it? Absolutely. Genius. Absolutely. <laughs> that was the first that was the first thing as soon as you told me snack i go i have to that's the first right. that's the first thing uh that's the first thing i said i, I put on there uh mate 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 absolutely well, i mean there it is the, the afl x nondescript team joins sweet loop joins with salt and vinegar chips chicken snack wrap 
Takis, Nutella, Oreos. What a sweet and savory mid. We've got Pringles in the rock, tasty block of cheese, and himself in the uh, <laughs> forward pocket. Um, that, that might be, oh. just so we know, chat, that might be the best reason we've ever seen someone put it in. Well done. <laughs> thank well, you. Well thank done. you, Lucinda. Thank you. I had to. Uh, that was uh, too funny, too funny not to pass up. Mate, well, we'll get that looking sexy. We've got a big competition at the end of the season uh, where we're going to send these into a knockout style competition via the votes. Uh, I reckon that'll be high up. That that's that, that is genius. But we come <laughs> to us. everyone's favourite segment, the version of Snog, Marry, Avoid, and that is Bench Ooh. Trade Play. We've got the amazing wagon wheel. The amazing wagon wheel of love. So we're going to pick three names for Luke. Luke's going to give us reasons of why he's going to save them, oh. play them, or trade them. And the first name is... Oh, I'll tell you what, this will be amazing. Jacob Wheatering. Yep. Yeah. So are you going to give me the three names? Yeah. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. So we've got Jacob Wheatering. Jacob Wheatering. Oh, I'll tell you what, this could be bants. Jake Lever. Oh, okay. Backman so far. Interesting. And Jeremy Finlayson, sir. We are in Lever and Finlayson. Interesting. Okay. All J names. So that's a that's a sign. Um, okay, so bench play trade. Um, what do you want me to start with? Give me your, your trade. All right. Um, I'm trading Jake Lever. Oof. He he doesn't he doesn't doesn't do doesn't do enough for me. Especially like if I've got if I've got Weedering there and I've got Finn Layson who if I really need to he can swing if I really need him to. Um, Jake Lever is just surplus to my needs. I could probably get someone good out of the out of the Gold Coast Suns for him. Probably get someone out of out of the Giants for him. Um, the Ruse maybe as well. Uh, so Jake Lever is definitely my um, my trade. And who are we playing? Oh, we're playing Weedering, hundred percent. Oh, we've converted him. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. No, I love. I love Weeders, despite all the shit that I used to talk about him. Um, I think he's such a he's such a good player. Um, and yeah, he he was always as soon as as soon as that was the first name drawn out of the wheel, um, he was going to be my my play, no matter who who sort of um, came up. And he was never going to get traded. He'd have a lot of currency, but he was never going to get traded. Mate, and we're benching Mister Jeremy Finlayson. Yeah, we're 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 for, we're, we're not going to get into everything that just happened with Finn Layson. So I feel like I was, you know, at, uh, you know, we're going to bench him. We're going to bench him uh, for his playing ability, not for his, not for what he said, uh, but we're going to bench him because we need a forward. Uh, and if I, like I said, if we really need to, if we really need to swing him, uh, we, we can put him in that back line. Uh, but I don't, I, I trade, I, sorry, I benched him as opposed to trading him because I just don't think he has enough currency like Jake Lever would um, to one of those teams that need um, a rebounding and and uh, a one-on-one -on -one defender like Lever. Does anyone else think that Jake Lever has really fallen off since winning the uh, flag? Yeah, the whole Melbourne team's fallen off since winning the flag. Do you know what I mean? Like, crazy to me. Do you know what I mean? Crazy to me. Like, he was yeah. like, he, he was in the ilk, but... He was really like, good, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you just kind of forget about him now. But I suppose that is the nature of this beast. Well, Swoop, you've got a big challenge here. This is a teamwork game. So the first person who did AFL charades is another good mate of mine, Jim Fuzz, right? And he set the My clubhouse boy. lead of five. So what we do in this game oh. is a good example is someone like, if it's Patrick Cripps, I'll say the first part of his first name is something that you do to a dog's head, Pat. Do you know what I mean? The second part, okay. and you've got to try and work it out. So you can say the full answer right. whenever you want, right? 
We've got two minutes. So through the process of uh, we have the timer. Look. Oh, sat. Uh, Mrs. Pom has chosen 25 names for me to tell you. So we're going to see how far we can get. But five is oh, the clubhouse lead. Full concentration mode. All right, let's do it. All right, so chat, you can help him remember. And the time starts now. Okay, first part of his name is what you would see at the casino when it says something bet. You've got your minimum bet. You've also got your... Large bet. Max bet. Big bet. Max. Max. Max, go on. Max, go on. Max, go on. No, second part of his name is something you live in. House. Max. Max Holmes. Max Holmes. Yeah, well done. Um, first part of this guy's name is um, the short version of Joseph. Joe. Um, first part of his surname is my real first name. Yeah, okay. What's the second part, though? Um, if you ignore jo one jo letter, jo it's the opposite of him. What? It's the opposite Dan of him. Her, oh, Joe Danaher. Oh, my God. Yeah, I thought I'm you said if you... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my okay, God. Okay, um, the what you said. first Go. name of this player is your name. Luke. Um, his surname is two different names. He obviously can't choose if he likes his mom or his yeah, dad. Mom. Davis, Davis Uniac. Luke Davis Uniac. Luke Davis Hold Uniac. on. Okay. Um, surname of this guy is a town in England. Um, your assistant coach. Bolton. He used to be Carlton right. head coach. Oh, Brendan. Um, no, the surname. His surname. Oh, Bolton. 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 Oh, shy Bolton. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Okay. Um, the oh god. Um, you're next of what? Next of Kim. Yeah, that's the second part of this guy's name. The first place is the middle bit of an email. The, the middle bit, Kim, Kim, making, making. No, no, no. Making, um, making. Oh. <laughs> It was Tom oh. Atkins. 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 Oh, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't even got. I wouldn't even got that. I wouldn't. We even got, got four. Atkins. We we got four though. That's a good start. The the Joe Danaher when Joe Dan. I, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. And then when you said it was the, it's him. What did you say? It was him without the first letter or something. So I was thinking Joe. Uh, Danim, Danim. I'm like, who the hell is Joe Danim? Who the hell is Joe Danim? <laughs> Mate, Shit. I, I, oh, I, I, oh, to be fair, to, to to be fair, right? You've done well there with four because uh, Faz, I reckon cheated because we had a uh, Colo Jasny, and and I was like, yeah, Jesus, sounds Russian, and he got it yeah, straight off the bat. But yeah, Mate. yeah, far out. Damn, four. four. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, I'm happy with four. I'm happy with four. Better than, better than three, and it's way better than none. Uh, do you know what I mean? Do, do you know what I mean? Uh, it, to be fair, this is my favorite game. This is my favorite game it's ever. Like, I, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty yeah, good. And then, yeah, it's good. It's uh, good. It, it's it, fun. Honestly, best game in the world. And we finish with the votes. I will show you my screen so we can see. Remember, this chat is probably the most important part of this show because this is more important than Brownlow. This is. But so far in the lead is Harry Mackay. Um, remember, this is co-voted, so you can't blame me uh, because... It was a Sydney fan that got him this win. Uh, we've got Matt Rowe up there, Isaac Heaney, Tom Stewart, Caleb Sarong, Rosie. Loads of people. We've got five votes coming up. So, Swooper, give me your one vote. Uh, one vote this week. I couldn't go past uh, Jake Waterman. Six goals uh, and just absolutely led uh, led West Coast Um to that, to that win. He hadn't kicked more than four goals in a game and he kicked four goals in the first half. So um, 
So he, he gets my he gets my one vote. Mate, mate, I love it. I love it. I went with, and I hate to do it because he beat Carlton, but uh, I beat, I went with Isaac Rankine. Uh, I oh, thought, interesting. Yep, yep, yep. I, I thought he's been under the cosh all week. And uh, what a performance. What a performance against Carlton's yeah. midfield and the forward line. Love a little bit, but I love the Jake Waterman vote. I really do. Yeah, now uh, Rankins. Yeah, he he played he played really well, and you're right. He um, yeah, came out of came out of came out of nowhere after a, after a slow start to the season. Both good votes. Both good votes. I wanted to give him more votes purely on the back of his guitar piece he did the other day as well. How good? Yeah, good on him. That was sick. We need to see more personalities like that in the AFL. I reckon. Mate, he, he seems like a good kid. But we come to the two votes. Who did you go with? This was. This was hard. There was a lot of players that played really, really well. But my two votes, compared to my other guys that I've given votes to, I gave to Noah Anderson. I think he was instrumental um, for the Suns. 36 disposals, one goal, 600 metres gained. And he's another one that we didn't really mention when we were talking about players um, that we're going to see for the next 10, 15 years. Him, Rao um, as well, both you know super incredible. But um, yeah, Noah Anderson gets my two votes. Mate, I think that mate, I, I absolutely agree. I think Noah Anderson, and Raul, and Tuck Miller, what a trio yes. as well. Like that, oh, they're a really good trio. Love Tuck. Mate, yeah, I, I love him. Yeah. Surprised Tuck's never been linked with a Victorian club. Yeah, yeah, doing paving his own way, which we love to see. Um, I went with one of my favourite kids in the AFL. I went with Harry Sheasel. Um, in a losing yeah. effort, but I was watching him. And just thinking, Jesus, like, I know he wants to be a one-club player, but if you're a list manager at any of the top eight, surely you're thinking, yeah. this guy's a genius. He is supreme. Yeah, you're giving him a 12-year contract, aren't you? Just, he's oh. just, he's ridiculous. And to do it, and to do it at the Ruse as well. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I'd I, bite your arm off for a bit of the she's. Absolute wonderful player. <laughs> um We've got three votes. Who are we going with? Uh, three votes. I went with my boy that we just sort of talked about, Cam Rayner. 25 disposals, nine clearances, 400 metres gained. Uh, we've fi finally seen him come come to his come come into his own. Um, and and we've sort of seen a, a slow build up this this year. Uh, but yeah, Cam Rayner really solidified himself as a as a as a really good player for the Lions. Mate, I love it. I I, I agree. I think he's, yeah, he, he's a kid that's probably been the hardest, hardest done by uh, in the uh, in the league, in my opinion. In, in the league, yeah. when you look at the abuse he's got. Um, your mate, Laughing Magpie, will love my free votes. I went with Sam Durham uh, for the reason he's just said. Um, going up against the Bond, Going up against a team that everyone expected they win, I thought yeah. Sam Durham's ability was absolutely phenomenal this week. And uh, yeah. yep. I mean, you don't often see Bont look average, but he he did. There was, like I said, there was a really there was a whole bunch of players that played outstanding football this week. Um, it was crazy the the quality of of players, not so much. Oh, the actual games were pretty quality as well, uh, but the quality of players that we saw this this week. Was 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 really on show. Four votes, Swoop. Who did you go with? Four votes. You can't. Well, I couldn't go past Jeremy Cameron. Six goals. Um, and I know you know against uh, against the Cats. Ah, uh, sorry, against against the Ruse. But Jeremy Cameron, I I I love I love Jez. Um, I wish he came to the Pies when we when we uh, when we wanted him. But, um, you know, Lance Franklin sort of gone. Jeremy Cameron can take that sort of spotlight. He is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, he'd walk into, you know, he'd even walk into Carlton with with Walsh and uh, with Kerno and uh, Mackay and just have a, a three-headed uh, forward beast. Uh, he's, he's phenomenal. He's incredible. You know what? We got the same votes. I went with Jeremy Cameron. And I, there I we go. I, I have a caveat here. Like I'm consistent. I know everyone had a go at Charlie Kerner last year for kicking mammoth goals versus shit teams, but you've yeah. still got to do it. Like my argument is, 
North Melbourne have played what five games this year. Not not every forwards kicked six goals on them. So it obviously That's, requires yeah, exactly. a good player to do it. So I yeah, I agree with you. I thought Cameron absolutely killed them on his own. Yeah, he was um he was he was incredible. And your five votes, Swoop. My five votes. Now look, you you I'm just I'm not doing this for brownie points. This is generally from from the heart. But my five votes goes to Sam Walsh. Like 34 disposals, 13 tackles, eight clearances, 600 metres gained. On his return back, on his return back, are you kidding me? That's elite numbers after um, everything that he's been through with that injury. That's absolutely elite. Yeah, you know what? We, we, haven't, we haven't collaborated this, but I went Sam Walsh for exactly the same reasons. Um uh, I just figured it was ridiculous. It was re- like, yep. honestly, in my opinion, after six weeks out, limited preseason, to be the best player on the ground. And I thought that was quite by a long way. Nothing against Keys, nothing against Rankine. Yep. I just thought the, the kid is special, is special. And yep. if we yep. had another Sam Walsh, we would have won that game by about 20 goals. Yeah, it's crazy it's like yeah it's just it's just crazy what he was able like you don't you don't expect someone who's had those back issues and limited training to sort of come in and um and perform like he did it just it just doesn't happen but it did it did it did happen and um we were all better for it watching him mate spot on and uh it looks like he's not going to change the leaderboard, but it looks like you're going to see Jeremy Cameron and Sam Walsh just quickly looking at that, breaking into the top five. We have got a good friend of mine. Jeremy is actually making us a Pombardi trophy of this that we hope <laughs> to give to the player. We hope to That's give to sick. the player. So I'm looking forward to that. But Swoop, tell everyone what you're up to this week because I am going to drop your link for your channel. But what what are the, what are you getting up to this week, Sweep? I know you've got loads on. Um, yeah, look this week, footy report um, tomorrow. That's on all of our uh, channels with a special guest. So that's going to be really fun. Um, you know, that's a, that's a weekly thing. That's live at, at eight o'clock at eight o'clock uh, on Tuesday nights. You know, I'm doing my usual uh, previews, reviews. There is probably going to be a, a bit of Collingwood news um, dropping tomorrow in regards to. Nathan Murphy probably that we're sort of keeping keeping our eye out for as well. Um, I got I got a little bit of a little bit of things on the sort of on the sort of burner at the moment. It's just about finding time. But yeah, you can find me on on YouTube, on Instagram, Swoop Luke, um, all the all the good stuff and and all the biased Collingwood stuff. Mate, you you're an absolute gentleman uh, of YouTube. Trust me, I spend a lot of time with YouTubers you. on, on on this scene, and I will tell you what, there's not many who have the heart, the compassion, but also the raw honesty as Swoop, trust me. So he's one of the good guys. I know he's a Collingwood fan. I know <laughs> we hate Collingwood fans secretly, but I've got to say Swoop makes it hard to uh, hate Collingwood fans um, because yeah, he is honestly, honestly, I love the guy to pieces. Um, so he gets a lot of shit, but there's not many who I trust as much as Swoop. But Swoop, thank you very much for swinging by. It's always a pleasure doing content with you. Make sure you go and say thank hello you, to him. Uh, please go and say hello to him. Um, I do love you, Ben. Uh, I'm only joking. Uh, but honestly, it's great to see you all. We'll see you soon, everyone. See you next week. Much see fun. you guys. Thank you for hanging out. Cheers. Love this.